Good evening. Welcome to the Pearl Report. I'm Diana Lin. China, Japan and South Korea share some similar social and economic challenges such as aging populations and youth unemployment. In the last of our three-part series, we explore the difficulties encountered by new university graduates to explain the nation's economic vicissitudes and discern from their essential differences the respective nation's future development. Fierce competition among China, South Korea and Japan's university graduates. Living in urban villages are China's ant colonies. I am willing to live in a bigger city. I get paid less, but I have more opportunities. In Japan, university graduates working in factories are dubbed freighters. Like what people often say, once you are over 30, job opportunities decline. South Korea's new generation compete to enter universities in order to join big enterprises. Only getting into a good university will change my life. In pursuing their ideals, what does the future hold for East Asia's youth? Gangnam in Seoul, South Korea. At nightfall, students in uniforms still roam the streets. They are going to cram schools, also known as hagwons. About 70,000 of them proliferate the nation. A South Korean study shows 7 in 10 elementary and middle school students attend them, paying an average 1,600 Hong Kong dollars each month. Shim Hyuk grew up in Busan. He says hagwons are popular because South Korean society favors those from elite schools, so competition starts at a young age. In middle school, I have to do better than classmates with high grades. In high school, the university entrance exam is most important. Only getting into a good university will change my life, so there is competition at all levels. Shim Hyuk graduated from university half a year ago, but still hasn't found a job. Like many South Korean youngsters, he wants to work for a big enterprise. My main concern is financial. Capable people hope to have more opportunities to prove themselves, so I really want to work for a big corporation. The pressure is on for South Korean students to study hard and get into a good college. Seoul National University is one of the country's most prestigious. But for some, all that hard work might just not pay off. In South Korea, the prestigious Sky Schools, Seoul National University, Korea University and Yonsei University have become admission tickets to big companies. Shim Hyuk didn't study at a Sky School and thinks he's at a disadvantage. When comparing Sky versus non-Sky graduates, Sky grads have a distinct advantage. So to surpass them, I must work harder in other areas. Only about 5% of South Korea's university graduates find employment in conglomerates or the civil service. The remaining 95% work in small and medium enterprises with lower pay and fewer perks, or they freelance. Many youths at this event say they feel worried about the future. We have a like, lot of youngsters in Korea have a part-time jobs. And 
their like you know hourly wage is quite low. It's like less than five dollars per hour, and I think it's not that helpful for us. Freelancing youngsters earn about 880,000 won, or about 6,000 Hong Kong dollars a month. They are known as the 880,000 won generation. Scholars think the situation hasn't improved in recent years because South Korea's economy is too dependent on chaebols. Monopoly of conglomerate is an institutional problem. We all know that. The government should intervene and solve the problem. If you ask me whether change will come quickly, I think not. South Korea's economy is in the hands of chaebols, which are family-controlled conglomerates. South Korea's population is about 50 million. Nearly 80 percent of its GDP comes from the top 10 chaebols, including Samsung and Hyundai. Samsung's output alone is near 20 percent of the GDP. It covers all aspects of life. South Korea's economy recovered rapidly after the Asian financial crisis and became one of the top 20 economies globally. But its government was accused of favoring the chaebols. One chaebol says it's doing its best to contribute to South Korea's economy. Regardless of any, any kinds of comment or you know, some uh, the, the complaints or negative you know, the, the comments, anyway, it's a reality that Korean chaebols contributed to the Korean economies. Many people say Korean economy is a miracle, but I don't think it's a miracle. It's a very scientific result. If they look into the details, how much chaebols are working hard, what they have there in mind is only how to contribute to Korean economy. Japanese reporter Daisuke Sato used to study and work in South Korea. He says the country's chaebol culture comes from Japan. South Korea's economy lagged far behind Japan in the past. At the time, Japan's economy was still very strong, and South Korea set Japan as a goal. Japan, with a population of 120 million, has wallowed in an economic quagmire for over two decades. South Korea is hot on its heels. The two countries compete as South Korean products invade the Japanese market. <laughs> Japan is globally renowned for its cosmetics, but inundated by the crest of the Korean fad, Japanese women have switched to South Korea's skincare and makeup products. Not that Japan's products aren't good, but South Korean brands' prices and effectiveness suit me more. Nevertheless, in Mrs. Sato's home, all the electronics products are Japanese brands. She and her homemaker friends say they won't use South Korean electronics. Japanese products rarely break down. They're high quality. Maybe that's why they seldom break down. So I use Japanese electronic products that I trust. For electronic products, if they're in the living room and seen by guests, then put out something better. That's how we feel. <laughs> it doesn't matter in the bedrooms, but must be better stuff in the living room. Japan's manufacturing industry moved their plants abroad early on. At the start of this year, employment in manufacturing dropped about 35 percent from the early 1990s. That's about 10 million people. Recalling Japan's economic heydays and the so-called Japan business model, one of its main characteristics is guaranteed lifetime job security for regular employees. But the situation began to change in the booming economy of the 1980s. Well, I think the real beginnings of this lie, and not in the recent decades of a bad economy, but actually really started when the economy here was, was great in the 1980s when you had a boom and you had a chance for young people to, for the first time and really in Japanese history, to go out and do things on their own. After the bubble burst in the 90s, half a million university graduates every year find it hard to realize their goal of working in big corporations, and a new term, freeters, emerged. 
there's a clear pattern where the amount of informally employed people is rising in the economy. But there's a lot of people that simply cannot get formal employment, and, and they are thrown into part-time employment, contract employment. These now comprise one-third of Japan's working population. Among them, freeders refer to those youngsters aged 15 to 34 who are not studying or working regularly. They work part-time or temporary jobs or are assigned short-term jobs by agencies. The Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare data show an estimated 1.8 million freeders in 2010. This documentary was made by a university graduate, Hiroki Iwabuchi, to record how he lived as a freeder. He was a factory worker a few years ago, earning 1,250 yen, or about 100 Hong Kong dollars an hour. The documentary became a hit when it was released. Uh, I was very shocked. To me, it dealt with occurrences within two meters of me. A story of my small circle. In 2005, Hiroki lacked the credits and had to delay his graduation. He missed a chance for a job as Japanese corporations usually recruit fresh graduates. He ended up in a factory as a freeder. I was about 23, the youngest among them all. The others were mostly in their 30s to 40s. Hiroki had taken film-related courses in university. After making his documentary and quitting his freeder job, he began working in a home for the elderly three years ago, earning about 190,000 yen or about 15,000 Hong Kong dollars a month. I think it's low. If I had graduated and immediately got a job with a conglomerate, I'd have been working for six to eight years now. So this wage is comparatively low. Working in an old folks' home is a far cry from his dream of making movies, but he has a relatively stable life. Now I am a regular employee and can live stably. I can also join a social security scheme. This is more stable than working for a temporary job agency. Besides Japan and South Korea, China also has a dearth of jobs in big cities, largely due to its urban-rural disparities. Its university graduates have become ant colonies living in urban villages. How do the three nations' youth see their future? More on that after the break. <music> Wuhan in China's Hubei province. Hangang hails from a small city in Hubei. After high school, he enrolled in a university in Wuhan, majoring in business administration. Graduating in 2009, he worked as a clerk in a small company, earning 2,500 yuan a month. He quit after a year. Because the job didn't have good prospects, even if I progressed, I'd only earn a few hundred yuan more a month. After quitting, Han Gong took a postgraduate admission test but failed. He then aspired to work for the government. A civil service post or a more stable job will do. This kind of job is decent and definitely provides for your daily needs. Civil service exam results are just out. Not too good, not too bad. About 120 marks. Can't say I'm confident. Look, I can only say I have a 50-50 chance for an interview. For now, Han Gang can only afford to rent a room similar to Hong Kong's subdivided flats at 500 yuan a month. In mainland China, post-80s people like him, who are highly educated and lowly paid, have been dubbed ant colonies. Like ants, they work very hard and earnestly, but they are very small. They belong to a lower social class, and there are many of them.
The ant colonies often live in urban pockets, which were rural villages surrounded by urban encroachment. The term ant colony first appeared in an unofficial poll in 2009. Ant colonies are seen as the fourth disadvantaged group after peasants, migrant workers, and those rendered jobless by economic reforms. There are more than a million ant colonists in mainland China. With little chance of becoming a civil servant, Han Gong and his high school classmates considered starting a fresh produce market. Uh, Finding a job in Wuhan is difficult, but Han Gang resists going to second and third tier cities or small towns. The competition is less fierce, but I don't feel good about it. I'm willing to live in a bigger city. I get paid less, but I have more opportunities. The reason why young graduates flock to big cities to develop their careers lies in the wealth gap between China's urban and rural areas. A study last year showed Chinese urban households had average net assets of more than 1,460,000 yuan, about 10 times higher than that of rural families. But jobs are scarce in big cities, and the large numbers of fresh grads aggravates the difficulty of finding a job. This year, China had a record 7 million high school graduates, and their employment challenges prompted the media to dub this year historically the most difficult to find a job. Grassroots villages, including some small towns, actually need many talented people. But why do the high school graduates congregate in medium-sized cities, especially first-tier cities? This has much to do with China's urban-rural disparities. Despite their low income, they are still willing to stay in big cities. In South Korea, 27-year-old Shim Hyuk has failed to find work for more than half a year. He hopes to enter the electronic games industry, where he feels the future is better. Our country's electronics technology is renowned even overseas. Moreover, we have a new government. Five cultural industries are to be developed, and the first one is electronic games. Competition is fierce in South Korean society. Shim Hyuk did not attend an elite university. To find a job as soon as possible, he has chosen to postpone his graduation, despite having enough credits so he can retain his student status. It's different going to an interview as a student or as a university graduate. Interviewers have a different view of graduates who haven't found a job. Although it's not a big difference, you do have an advantage going as a student. To prepare for their careers, Shim Hyuk meets his friend regularly to discuss interview skills. In South Korea, only 5% of graduates get a job in conglomerates annually. Shim Hyuk and his friends think these big companies smother small and medium enterprises, but recognize they are necessary for the country's development. Those with good backgrounds and good qualities are concentrated in the chapels. The chapels have a monopoly in resources and talented people. I think the government should stop it. A Japanese journalist analyzing South Korean society finds the competitive attitude of its youths is similar to their Japanese counterparts in the 1950s and 60s. Everyone thinks he has to study hard, get into top enterprises, have superior prospects and a good social status. Japan's economy developed early on and its society is more mature. Some analysts note Japanese youths want to choose their own paths and not be restricted by social norms. Unable to attain his dream job in the film industry, Hiroki is working in an old people's home and helps friends do some filming in his spare time. Certainly, I am taking into account both my job and my interest. Now I feel they are balanced. 
After graduating from university, Hiroki spent some time as a freeder. Some of his friends belonging to this band are also university graduates, but they'd rather work freelance, like Keisuke Miura, who had studied IT. <laughs> My job is to test beer for drinking. So Yamamura studied politics in a law school. There is not many working days. I clean buildings, work as a security guard. I do these sometimes. <laughs> They don't have plans for the future, but focus on the present to pursue their musical dreams. The Japanese government has conducted research on freeders. It found 40 percent of the people desire a regular job in the long term, but have difficulty finding one after a long period of time as a freeder. Scholars blame the previous generation for the dissatisfaction of today's youth. Japan had a clump generation, referring to people in their 60s now. These people benefited the most from Japan's rapid economic development and the economic boom. I think they really hate these people. Youths in the East Asian Troika of China, Japan and South Korea are pursuing their dreams. They are also the future of their countries. Japan has over a million freeders, referring to people without regular jobs and thus regarded as non-existent in Japan. Scholars are worried this will lead to social problems. These people isolate themselves at home or even commit suicide. This is the most serious problem. In China, no matter how hard a graduate works, his career path may ultimately depend on his family background. Scholars worry the weak ant tribes may be a social time bomb. Your parents' power, authority, money and social resources are very, very important in the process of finding a job. This leads to social discontent, anger, or even hatred of society. Music therapy gives South Koreans a chance to vent their dissatisfaction towards society and personal worries. Experts in South Korea's economy think breaking up the chaebols and setting up a democratic economy is the way out for South Korea. The uh, Korean economy has uh, achieved a rapid uh, success, but uh, these days we see many imbalance between conglomerate and the small and medium companies. Uh, their situation is uh, harder than ever before. So we need to solve this problem. Well, thank you for watching our show. It will be re-aired on Tuesday and Saturday as well as on TVB.com. Until next time, from the Pearl Report team, good night, good luck and good health.